Welcome back to Advanced Training, Character Modeling Part 2. I'm Matthew Doyle. If you haven't already watched Part 1, at this point, I recommend you go back and do so because we're going to be moving a little bit faster and we're not going to be covering all the tools that we've already covered in detail. So I expect that you already know how to use those tools and if you don't, you're probably going to not be able to follow along as well in the remaining videos. So please do that now. So we're continuing to model the legs here by extruding out the faces from the torso. And we're just going to keep doing that, extruding these faces down all the way past the thighs to the knees and then all the way down to the bottoms of the feet. Right now we're in vertex mode and we're just aligning these edges so that they match up with our model sheet. Now it's a good idea to make sure you have some good reference material on hand while you're doing this. In this case we'd need some cat reference anatomy of the leg in this case of course if we're working on the legs because obviously cat legs are a little bit different than human legs and they do bend in two places they have joints in two places and of course it will help you when you're creating your anatomy because you want the edge flow of your character to match the anatomy now even though this is a cartoony stylized character we still want it to be based slightly in reality so that's why good anatomy reference is important so we're just continuing to move these edges and extrude these faces down the legs to the thighs. And here we're going to use Quadraw's Insert Edge Loop tool, holding down Control, to add some more detail in the thighs here. And we'll be able to select these edges now and then extrude them, or I should say scale them outwards to create more of a rounded shape to our thighs here because they were pretty straight. All right, that looks good. Once again, paying more attention to the left side of the model sheet than the right side. Back in the side view here, we'll just continue to make some adjustments. Obviously, to get these verts matched up with the side view, we need to move them into place and then do the same for the bottom ones and then scale them down. Okay. So we'll move on down to the feet. We'll skip ahead a little bit because most of what we just did is pretty much repeated for the rest of the leg. In this case, we're going to extrude down from the legs to the ankle area. Once again, scaling to shape the model sheet, moving these faces into place. And then we will, once we've got these faces into place for the ankle, we'll just go ahead and extrude those same faces down again to create the bottom of the ankle. First, we'll jump back into the side view and make sure everything matches up here as well. It's a good idea to jump back and forth between the front and the side viewport as you work. Now we're creating the bottom part of the ankle here. Once again, scaling that area, moving it into place to match the left side of the model sheet. Back in the side view, doing the same thing. Okay. So now we can go ahead and use those same faces. Once again, just using the extrude tool. And we're going to extrude all the way down to the bottom of the feet this time. Now we're ready to create the toes. Before we do that, let's select the front faces of our foot here and extrude those out to create the tapered part of the foot. In the front view, we'll go ahead and scale them in on the X axis to match the model sheet. And then we'll scale them down on the Y axis and then move them down towards the bottom of the foot to give that tapered effect to the foot. Now we can go ahead and extrude out the toes. We'll do it one at a time here. And we want to make sure that when we extrude them out, we'll obviously scale them down because they're a little too big. We can also use the top view here to position them. All right, we'll just repeat that process for the other three toes, or I should say the other two toes. We have three toes total. Obviously, if you had five toes, it would be more complicated to model five toes versus three, but the process would be the same. Our character still looks pretty boxy at this point, but you can really start to see him taking shape now. So now we're going to select the top edges here where our toes meet the foot, and we're just going to pull them down to create a divot there. Excellent. So now we're going to look at the model in a higher resolution mode. This is by pressing 3 on the keyboard. We go into the high res preview. What it does is it subdivides the model into many more polygons than it really is. And this is using Open Subdiv, which is a technology by Pixar, allows you to get this really high performance 
preview. All right, so we're just going to continue to cut some more detail here using the multi-cut tool. We're going to go right down the torso and just cut this extra edge down the side of his body on both sides, all the way down the legs. Now, we could have used the insert edge loop tool with Quadraw, but by using the multi-cut tool, this gives us more control over where we make those cuts and how far we want those cuts to extend. Whereas with the insert edge loop tool, it's a pretty much one operation deal where it goes from its choice of where to begin and where to end and where to make the cuts. All right, so this allows us to round out our torso much better by adding this extra detail. And now we're going to use a very powerful tool called the Sculpt Geometry Tool. The Sculpt Geometry Tool found in the Mesh Tools menu is going to allow you to use a mud box like interface to basically sculpt the geometry. Imagine that. So you're using basically an interactive painting style here to give the model a more organic or rounded shape. And I'm able to, just like in Mudbox, uh, as I paint in one direction to basically bulge out the model, I can also hold down control to paint in the opposite direction to cut into the model. And if I were to hold down shift, I can actually average out the distance between verts or smooth it out, thus giving me a much more homogenized look to my polygons, that homogenized being where all the polygons are basically the same size and shape. So it's a very, very powerful tool to use. It's really handy here for giving us that organic shape that we need. Otherwise, it would be pretty tedious and pretty difficult to manually go in and move all these verts around one at a time using just the standard move tool. So you can really see the, the flexibility of the sculpt geometry tool here. Great. Our model's really starting to look good here. So let's move on to the rib cage. And what we're going to do to create the rib cage in the model sheet and the concept already has a very pronounced rib cage in the front that sticks out. So first of all, we need to take this edge here and basically shape it so it matches the model sheet in both the front and the side viewports. And obviously we're going to have to make up for that big gap in the middle there by adding an edge ring later. But for now, we're just going to add a new edge that matches the one we just created or modified really close to it. And by doing that, this is going to allow us to create that crease because of the two edges being so close together. Now here in the high resolution preview mode, I'm basically taking those top edge verts and pulling them down and out. And by doing that, that gives us our crease. So it's really nice to be able to work back and forth between the low res display and the high res preview display, which is three on the keyboard. It gives you an idea of what your final model is going to look like with a normal map applied. So here in the high res display, I'm just basically moving the verts of the stomach so that they match the model sheet. Here we have an example of some triangles we need to get rid of. And we're just going to use the Merge Vertex tool found in the Edit Mesh menu. We're going to use that Merge Vertex tool to bring that single vert down to the bottom vert on the crotch. And that gets rid of those triangles. Now in Quadra, we'll do an Insert Edge Loop here to more homogenize those polygons and then continue to round out the belly here by moving those verts. Back into the Sculpt Geometry tool here, we'll continue to make some adjustments. You'll notice here that I'm adjusting the brush's strength. You can either do that in the options or you can hold down the M key and simply click and drag and that will adjust the strength of the brush. So obviously a very low strength will give you very subtle movements of the verts, whereas a high strength will move those verts a great amount. Same thing when you want to use the smoothing aspect of the tool by holding down the shift key. You can also press and hold B to increase or decrease the size of the brush as well. So here I just added a crease for the buttocks by adjusting those verts. And now in our preview mode, we can see it's starting to look pretty good. So we'll continue to add some detail here by adding some more edge loops on the arms, just using the quad draw tool. And then obviously making adjustments to the verts as needed by rotating them and scaling them so that they match the model sheet a little better. And this is just, you know, going to continue to give us that homogenized flow to our polygons where they're all basically squares. They're all basically the same size. You're not going to get them perfect, but you want to get them as close to homogenous as possible. Same thing for the forearm here, just adding more edge rings and scaling them out so that they match the model sheet. 
So now we're going to work with the hands. We're just going to continue to extrude out from the arms, the same process here to create the hands. And then we'll scale those faces down to match the model sheet here in the front viewport. For the thumb, we need to adjust the verts here so that it matches the shape of the thumb. There we go. Now we can take the face on the side of the hand there and extrude it outwards to create the beginning of our thumb. We'll do the same thing for the regular fingers. We'll just extrude them out and then pull them down and rotate them as we do so to match the model sheet. We'll also separate them a little bit here. And then for the third finger, we need to pull out some more faces to create the rest of the hand. So we're extruding them out from the side of the hand there and then extruding out the finger just as before with the other fingers, pulling it apart. We'll take this back edge here and just round out the rest of the hand, modifying the palm by pulling the verts up and just continuing to shape the fingers and extrude them out. All right. So we can see here, we're just rounding out the rest of these fingers and extruding out the thumb. And then we'll position that face to match the model sheet. So here we're going to add some more edge rings around the bends of the fingers. Now the bends of the fingers, the reason why we're doing this is because when they bend in animation, if we don't add these extra edge rings, it's going to create some problems, some squashing and, so, and stretching. So we've added these extra edge rings and we're using the edge constraint, transform constraint, to make to slide them close together. Basically to slide them close to the edge where the fingers bend. And this will help to solve that squashing and stretching problem with the, when the fingers animate. And you'll want to do this for other areas that bend in the same way. Now we're just selecting all the verts of the hand and scaling them up to match the model sheet a little better because the hand was a little small there. Here we'll create the nails and to do that we're just going to use the multi-cut tool. And basically I'm just going to cut out the shape of the nail on the top of the finger here. And I'm also keeping in mind that I want to maintain all quads here. So I'm basically just going to cut it out in such a way that it ends up being one, two, three, four, five four-sided polygons. You can see how I've done that here using the multi-cut tool. And once I've done that, I can select the nail faces and just use the extrude tool and extrude them out like so. From here, it's just a matter of shaping the nails by moving the verts and the edges around. Then we can continue to extrude the nails outward, rotating them those faces for the nails and then point, making them sharper by continually scaling them down. I want to maintain that final four-sided polygon at the end instead of having a point though. Here I'm just going to select the edge rings at the bends of the fingers and scale them inwards. And when I go into the high preview mode, you'll see that this creates a nice crease there, which is going to be uh, look a lot better for our normal map as well as work better for animation. Finally, for the hands, we'll grab these faces under the fingers and we'll extrude them out and then scale them inwards to create basically the pads underneath the fingers. Cats have these pads on their toes, basically. There we go. And so now, once again, in the high resolution preview mode, making use of Pixar's open subdiv, we can see our hands are basically complete. Could use a little more work, but overall, our hands are done. They look pretty good. All right, so now we're going to fix our symmetry here by deleting one side of the mesh. We're going to select all the faces on that one side and hit delete. And then we simply go back into object mode and we'll use the flip geometry tool. But first we're going to delete the construction history so we have a nice clean mesh. Go into our mesh menu and use mirror geometry. Make sure the settings are set to default, which should be the proper settings. And of course we want to merge the pieces and now we have our perfectly symmetrical mesh again. Okay, so looking pretty good here. Next up we'll continue to add some details here for the wrist. Once again we're adding an extra edge ring just like we did with the fingers so that it will animate better. Likewise we'll do the same thing for the elbow area where the arm bends giving those extra edges around the center edge there where it bends will help it to animate better. Also for the shoulder, once again you want to do that for all the parts, the kneecaps, all of that, that where it will bend. 
For the toes here, we're adding some edge rings that will allow us to round the toes out a little bit better. We already have the divot there. What we're going to do with these edge rings, we're going to turn on edge constraint. And we're going to slide them closer to the foot. And once we have them closer to the foot, we're just going to take those top edges, the very top of those edges, and then we're going to pull them straight up towards the same level as the rest of the foot. So here we are selecting those edges. And now we'll go ahead and pull them up. And uh, well, we need to make sure that our constraint is off there. Obviously, we couldn't pull them up because our constraint was still on. Now we'll pull them up and out a little bit towards the toes. When we switch into our high resolution preview mode, we can see the toes are much more rounded.